Hey everyone, and welcome to the first Security Topics video. Uh, this video will be on SecComp. These are the videos I have roughly planned for the future. Um, if you have any ideas of different topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know. Uh, I'm Conrad on Discord, or you can just leave a comment below. Um, but basically the idea is the topic needs to be related to CTFs or security engineering in general, uh, specifically kind of like more attacker defense sort of security, um, and something that I don't know much about. Um, this. I'm using this as an opportunity to also learn new things and then make a video as part of it. And so hopefully we all learn together. Uh, each video should be about 10 minutes long. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Um, so for the rest of this video, uh, first we're gonna do a brief introduction to SecComp. Then I have a demo, some C code. We're gonna look at libseccomp and seccomp tools, uh, which is a popular tool. We're gonna talk about some of the related CTF challenges and their solutions, and then that's it. Um, so hopefully a quick video. Uh, first off, what is SecComp? Um, so SecComp, uh, Big picture, it is a defensive tool provided by the kernel um, for restricting the actions an executable can take. Um, so it is a defensive tool, which is you know also fun for attackers since we get to try to bypass it, um, but it is a defensive tool. And really what it's doing is it's restricting the uh, syscalls that a process can make. Um, so if we remember back to our syscall table, uh, let me load this up. Um, this is the syscall table from Chromium. Uh, any process can talk to the kernel using these syscalls, and there's a whole bunch of syscalls. Um, I think there's like 200-something syscalls for x86-64. Uh, my bad, 300-something. Uh, it's 332 syscalls. And so most processes just don't need to use all these syscalls. Like you would imagine that a lot of processes are going to be using read, write, open, close, stat, stuff like that. Probably not stat, but read, write, open, close, exit, sig return, stuff like that. Um, the average process probably doesn't need to use exec VE. Specifically, if it's like a forward-facing sort of web app, um, you would hope that it's probably not going to make exec VE calls to bin shell, for example. Um, that's probably not what you want. Um, but any process has access to stuff like this. Um, and so it would be nice if we could say, hey, process, uh, once you're all set up, you're only allowed to make these syscalls. And so... Uh, secure computing mode was uh, created, and that is what it does. Uh, there's a lot of existing applications that already use SecComp, a pretty popular tool. Um, I listed a bunch over here, but you know the major web browsers and operating systems. Uh, you can also specify uh, a SecComp profile when you use Docker, which is pretty fun. So you know Docker is just processes and namespaces. Um, so when you spawn that new process, uh, processes the child process inherits the SecComp from the parent process. So you know you can have a lot of fun with that. Um, and there's two different ways to, well, I guess three different ways to enable it. Uh, there's two syscalls. You can either use the process control syscall, and then eventually later a set comp syscall was added. Um, and we can see those, uh, PRC control. So syscall 157, I think we're on, yeah, we're on x86-64. Um, so you can either use that syscall or the set comp syscall. Um, when you call these syscalls though, uh, it's a little bit, uh, complicated because under the hood, the kernel is actually accepting something called a BPF. Um, so, or BPF VM, I guess, VM code. Um, so BPF stands for Berkeley Packet Filter. Uh, we're not going to talk about it too much in this video, but uh, it's like this VM thing that was created for doing network taps. So you can imagine the kernel, you know, it has its network devices. Uh, there's a whole bunch of packets and frames being sent to it. Uh, different user land applications want access to all these different packets, uh, but it's kind of expensive for the kernel to keep passing all these packets uh, to the application, specifically if the application doesn't need that many uh, to see all the packets. And so uh, there's this Berkeley packet filter. It's a virtual machine. Um, it's kind of, it's a very restricted virtual machine. You can't do loops. You can only jump forward. Um, but it's just a way, uh, a virtual machine that the kernel understands. Um, and so seccomp uh, piggybacks off of this BPF. And so you can use it to filter on syscalls and a bunch of other things that we'll see about, uh, we'll see later. Um, but yeah, when you call these syscalls, you have to pass a BPF sort of program, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but thankfully there's some libraries that make it much simpler. Uh, the other way you can enable seccomp um, is the child process can also inherit it or does inherit it from the parent process. So once you enter a restricted mode, you stay in a restricted mode. Um, so cool. Uh, so we can demo it. Um, if you're interested in the source code or any files, I'm going to start putting them under oops, uh, Con, oops, too far, uh, Conrad's security topics uh, on GitHub. Um, I'll link it in the description or something. Um, but you don't need the files, but if you want them, they're there. Um, and we're going to cover two quick things. We're going to build a quick seccomp app, and then we're going to inspect it with seccomp tools, which is a very cool tool. Uh, let me start a container. Uh, so this is our program. I'm not going to program this in live time. It's kind of boring. Uh, so we're going to be using libseccomp, a uh, very popular library for doing stuff like this. I think most CTFs challenges I see also use libseccomp instead of writing the, the VM code themselves. 
um, which is the way to do it. Uh, to install it, uh, very simple. Um, I'm on an Ubuntu machine, so we can just do apt install, I think it's lib set comp dev. Um, and this will install the headers and also the library. Um, so now we can include this. I'm writing this on my Mac, so that's why it's red um, with the red squiggly since I don't have the libraries within the Docker container on my Mac. Um, we're gonna do some more imports. So for this program, um, we're going to use standard out and we're going to write start C out. Um, so under the hood, this should be using the write uh, syscall to write to standard out, which is file descriptor one. And then we're going to make a system call uh, and we're going to echo start system. Um, so under the hood, uh, we can't do an exec VE because we don't want you know this process to turn into whatever process we're calling or uh, replacing with. Um, so we're going to do system. I think under the hood, this probably calls clone, uh, but you know we're still going to block the, the clone syscall, so the demo should still work. Um, this is the lib setcomp code. Um, so we're creating a setcomp filter context. Then we're going to init it. So within setcomp, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, there's a couple different actions you can take. You can kill a process. You can pass a process. Uh, you can enable audit mode. I think you can also have it uh, like a ptrace mode, and there's something about... Uh, other processes can also respond to the set comp um, or create their own set comp policy that an, does the allow or deny. Um, so we're going to pass the action here uh, and then we're going to add our individual rules. So within set comp, you can do a whitelist or a blacklist. Um, and so we're going to do a whitelist, you know, the secure one. Um, and we're going to only allow read, write, exit, and sig return. Um, this is also called strict mode, and you can actually just specify that you want to enter strict mode and it'll do it for you. You don't have to specify all four of them. Uh, that's built into setcomp. I think that's the original version of setcomp was they only allowed strict mode. Could be wrong about that, but that's what I, the feeling I got from the docs. And then we enable it. So if we try to make any syscall besides these four, uh, the process will get a sig int, I think, and it will die. Um, so at the end, we're again going to use the write syscall. So we're going to use standard out for that um, or C out for that. And then we're going to make another system call, which hopefully doesn't work, uh, echo end system, and we'll see what happens. So to compile this code, let me close this. Uh, to compile this code, we need to make sure we include the library since it's you know, a non-standard library. So we're gonna do GCC, uh, G++, uh, it's called demo.cpp. We're gonna include library dash L, set comp, and this will create a file called a.out. Uh, and if we execute it, we can see it calls cout, uh, system start, cout end, uh, but then bad system call uh, where we expected a end system. Um, so cool, uh, the sys call was blocked. If we want to inspect this a little bit further, there's a nifty tool called strace. Um, you can do strace a out. And this will show us all the uh, sys calls that are being made. Uh, it's pretty fun. So if we go to here, uh, a lot of stuff is happening, but we can see this is the right sys call. So we're writing the standard out, start. Um, I assume all of this is related to system, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we got sick, a bunch of sick options, a memory map, uh, sick proc mass. Here's the clone. So this is creating the duplicate of the process so then eventually they can call exec. I don't think we see the exec calls here. Um, this is us installing the set comp and then this is us writing at the end and then eventually another uh, sick action with a sick in. Um, if we wanted to see the child process to see the uh, exec call, I think we can do a dash F exec VE. -E. There we go. Uh, exec VE, cool. And so here is the child process, PID 57, I guess. Exec VE bin shell, and we can see our echo system start. Uh, but it should be the only one. Uh, this is the process creation, process creation, yeah. So it's the only one, so the other exec VE call did not go through, which is good, setcomp is working. Um, cool, so what happens if you are given a binary and you want to know what setcomp policy is installed and you don't want to go through a reversing tool? Uh, thankfully, there's a very cool tool called setcomp tools, setcomp tools. You install it by gem. Uh, let me actually load it up. Um, if you recognize this David uh, 942J name, uh, that is because they are also the author of One Gadget, another amazing tool. Uh, but anyway, Setcomp Tools, it's a little uh, Ruby package. Um, and I think it's, it was built for CTFs. Um, yeah, it says some speech features might be CTF specific, but it's a tool for uh, analyzing set comps of real cases. Um, and so what we can do is analyze the set comp policy we just enabled uh, on that binary. So we're going to do set comp tools. Uh, we can do help to see what we have. Let's do dump a dot out. And we have the set comp for this, uh, for this process, uh, for this binary actually. Um, so, uh, this is the Berkeley packet filter, uh, VM sort of program. Um, and it looks a little bit weird. Uh, if you were to write this, uh, the, 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 
uh, seccomp policy yourself without using uh, libseccomp. You'd be writing uh, you know, this highlighted sort of portion, uh, but thankfully we don't have to do that because um, there's like the jump true, jump false, uh, fun stuff. Uh, so first it's going to sign A equal architecture. We'll talk about this stuff a little bit later, but different architectures have different syscall numbers. Um, so like if we do exec VE, exec VE, we can see on, uh, this is x86-64, it is syscall number 59, but down here on uh, just 32-bit mode, it's syscall 11. So very different. So you need to make sure that you're filtering on the correct uh, architecture first, or you can include multiple architectures, but they all need to have their cor correct corresponding uh, syscall number. So after we do the architecture check, uh, we're going to assign A is equal to the sys number, so the syscall number. Uh, there's this trickery here. So I believe this is because on x86-64, you can use the 32-bit ABI um, or sys, uh, syscalls. Uh, and I think when you do that, the 30th bit is set um, just to differentiate between them. And so that's what they're doing uh, for this check right here, uh, just in case you're using the 32-bit API, even though you're on an x86-64 architecture. Uh, and I think there was a CTF challenge related to this, um, which is pretty fun. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, otherwise, after the system checks, I should probably talk about this. It says go to 10 if it is not the correct architecture. So we follow over to line 10 down here. And so this means it's going to return kill. And so it's going to kill the process. But otherwise, if we pass all these checks, if the syscall is equal to read, go to 9. 9 is down here. It says allow. And so the syscall is allowed. Same with write. Sig return. And if it's not equal to exit, we go to kill. Otherwise, we go to allow. Um, so yeah, that is some BPF code, and uh, it's really not too bad. Um, so seccomp tools, though, uh, amazing tool. Uh, I've used it before a bunch on different CTFs. Uh, very handy. I'm not 100% sure how it works behind the scenes. I imagine it's executing the process and then inspecting the BPF on the process instead of, like, disassembling the code and, like, looking for a seccomp object or something or a BPF program uh, in memory. Uh, that seems a little bit crazy. So I imagine it's using some sort of ptrace API, but I'm not too sure. Uh, maybe it'd make a fun video in the future to do some digging. Cool. So uh, seccomp, uh, there's a lot to the docs. Um, I highly recommend this resource down here, but it's uh, it's very long. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. But like I said, for filtering, we can filter on the syscall number. We can filter on the architecture. We can filter on arguments passed to the syscall. Uh, it's a little bit restricted. Um, so if you were to pass like a string, like a C string or care star, um, you would only see the pointer. You wouldn't actually see the dereferenced value, uh, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but I mean, obviously it has to be that way. Um, so numeric values only, uh, and then you can also see the instruction pointer. So maybe you could do some like crazy sort of conflow, control flow integrity sort of check where you see if exec VE is allowed if it's made within a certain region, but I don't really know how that would work with ASLR, so uh, I need to do more research. Um, you can also set the action for when seccomp is violated. Uh, so we were doing kill, but you could also just allow it pass. So this would be your blacklist. Um, you can have it do some ptrace stuff. I think there's a way for you know another process to also be like the arbitrator, uh, which uh, I think it's used maybe within Docker or something like that. Um, I didn't quite understand it, to be honest. Uh, and then there's this fun thing called audit mode. Um, and so audit mode, uh, instead of actually blocking it, it'll just create a log entry, um, which seems very interesting. Um, so kind of related. So I work on a somewhat related technology called content security policy, and we have something called report only mode. Uh, and it is like the saving grace of uh, content security policy, that and report URI, uh, just because it's very hard to debug. And it's just so easy to shoot yourself in the foot with these technologies. So like if you were to enable this on your application and you missed a syscall um, and you're deploying this, you know, binary to customers, you can imagine it'd be very easy to miss a syscall and then the process just crashes with a sigint because you forgot the syscall. Um, so it's pretty cool. You can enable this audit mode. Uh, and I imagine, you know, before you go into this enforce mode, you just audit, see what syscalls are actually being used. Um, and so that way you get all of them. But another idea I had, and maybe, you know, this is already being done. If it is, please let me know. Or if I'm stupid, also please let me know. Um, but I was wondering if, imagine uh, at a previous company, we had a fleet of containers um, and they had a bunch of different front end technologies, you know, like Nginx and Flask and all that stuff, Node.js. Um, and we used to query it using OS query to see if any of those processes spawned an exec, or exec uh, bin shell. And so none of these processes should be doing an exec bin shell. Um, they should all just be serving web traffic. Uh, but if they did, that'd be something either, you know, there's a zero day or something malicious is happening, or we just have some, you know, non-ideal code that's spawning, uh, doing a system call that should also be investigated. And so we used OS query for that. But I was wondering, could you not just use audit mode um, for this uh could this be also be a use case for audit mode um, and see if they are using the exec VE syscall or any other dangerous syscalls we want to monitor from? And then, you know, it's just going to audit. It's not going to crash the process, but it's going to audit it. And then I guess that goes to syslog or, syslog or systemd or something like that. 
and uh, you know, then you know, investigation team can take a look and see what's happening within on that container. Um, but it seems like a useful thing to do, but I don't know if it's actually, maybe I'm being stupid. Uh, cool, so CTF challenges. Um, these are the CTF ch related CTF challenges I could find. Um, the first one uh, category of challenge is the open read write challenges. And so in this challenge, a set comp policy is applied and you're only allowed to use open read write. And from there you have to get flag. So normally in these CTF challenges, uh, if you're doing a binary exploitation one, the goal is usually usually to pop shell. So you know you call system bin shell and you can cut out the flag. Um, but if you enable open read write on these processes, obviously we're not going to be popping shell. And so instead you need to open flag.txt, read flag.txt, and then write the response back to uh, standard out, which will be, you know, netcat back to you. So an example of this was dice 2023 pwn pop. Um, I have a video, uh, I'll, I'll link it below, or you can just search for pwn bop and it'll pop up. Um, or you can read the write-ups online. Uh, you don't have to watch the video. Um, and so in this challenge, we were ROPing. Uh, if you're not familiar with ROPing, there's you know, videos on the, the channel somewhere. Uh, but we were ROPing uh, to create a payload that did this open read-write uh, because we're, we weren't allowed to call system. But you can imagine you maybe you have a, you're have you just doing a shell coding challenge too where you're writing your own assembly and injecting it. And that also has to make the correct syscalls to open read-write. So at that point, it's just kind of more of like a programming and assembly challenge. Uh, kind of related to that, there's also, uh, there was, I forget what CTF was, but there was a challenge where we had to use get dense because the flag had a non-standard name. And so get dense or get directory entries uh, is just a syscall and it'll tell you all the files in a directory. Um, but because we didn't know what the flag was, we had to call the syscall and you have to parse the response and uh, all that fun stuff. I think I ended up just kind of cheesing it instead of creating directory entries and like actually parsing it. I think I just knew the flag started with flag or something. So I just did like a memory search and assembly to see where flag started and then I knew what the name was instead of being clever. Um, and then I think there was one where you had to use open at instead of open or something like that. So those are two categories of CTF challenges related to um, uh, syscalls, sorry, uh, setcomp. Uh, another one is kind of doing uh, bypasses of the virtual machine. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, there's some trickery with calling x32 APIs on x8664. And so if the architecture checks aren't done correctly, uh, you can have some fun stuff with that. Um, it's, I think these challenges are a little bit more involved, but you could also imagine maybe you're supplying binaries and they're specifically checking for syscall, you know, 59 X, uh, which is exec VE on X8664, but maybe you can pass a 32 bit binary that has a different architecture or something like that. Um, so this can be fun. And then there was a last category that I wasn't even aware of, but, but while doing researching for this video, uh, I found this uh, pretty cool article by N132, uh, Guide of SecComp in CTF, and they included a different category of SecComp challenges, uh, specifically, and I think there's only one challenge in this category, uh, but as Google CTF 2022, uh, there was a challenge called S2, and they wrote their own custom SecComp, I guess, execution engine. Uh, it looked very neat. It looked like a very involved challenge, uh, very crazy stuff, um, but if you're curious on that, uh, that was the name of the challenge. Um, I'm guessing this already exists, but I think it would also be fun as a reversing challenge where maybe there's a set comp policy that uh, you can uh, filter on arguments. So maybe all the arguments are just the characters to the flag or something. I haven't seen it, but it probably does already exist. But if it doesn't, uh, maybe I'll make a challenge for ICTF or something like that. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, these are the resources. I think I've already linked all these before, but if you want to learn more, there was a really amazing talk. I watched a couple of talks, but this one was amazing. Uh, using SecCom to limit the Linux kernel attack surface by Michael Kersick. I believe they are also the author of theman7.org. Um, so uh, yeah, just very detailed. They go over the Berkeley packet filter. If you're looking for a more in-depth view, uh, that was my favorite resource. If you really want to learn how it works, uh, this Man7 article, also written by Michael Kersick. Um, I, I believe he's a full-time docs writer for uh, Linux. Uh, but it was amazing. It was great. Um, and then there was that blog post, and then there's also the setcomp tools. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you now understand what setcomp is. You know, it's for restricting syscalls. We did a little demo and talked about some CTFs. Um, I think uh, if you have any topics that you're interested in, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I think I'm starting up a, a Discord just for this sort of stuff. So if you're interested, uh, I'll put the Discord link below. Feel free to join and leave a comment. And otherwise, I will uh, see you at the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.